college students, listen up. Before you start loading funds onto that student ID card, you might want to check the fine print. Allison Kosick has our story. ID cards that double as debit cards are popping up at universities all over the country, but that convenience could come at a price. A new study from a national consumer group found 900 partnerships between colleges and banks or financial firms. So that means about half of all college students have access to these cards. Most are used for giving out financial aid and university refunds, and a smaller chunk work as traditional debit cards. Students trust the services, assuming the college has given them a thumbs up. But these cards may carry high fees, like ATM and overdraft charges. And some cards even have purse wipe fees. Meantime, schools are reaping the benefits. For example, a new contract between Ohio State University and Huntington Bank will funnel $25 million to the school over the next 15 years. Add that to the $100 million that will be invested in neighborhoods around the campus through the, through the deal, and you're looking at a pretty substantial cash flow. The university says the relationship with the bank is simply a partnership, and they've taken steps to protect students. There is a convenience factor in this. Many students take their school IDs everywhere, so that means they've always got a debit card. And with financial aid put right on the card, students don't have to worry about getting a check to the bank. I'm Allison Kosick in New York. A human helicopter has broken the world record for the longest flight, but they didn't exactly get an A for altitude, as Jeannie Moose reports. Sure, liftoff is easy with engines, the quest to build a human-powered helicopter is littered with letdowns. Though this Japanese craft may not look like a helicopter. And now Americans using rotors powered by pedaling have broken the world's record a whopping 50 seconds. Engineering students at the University of Maryland have been chasing the $250,000 Sikorsky Prize for three and a half years. It doesn't sound that hard to win the prize. The flight just has to last one minute and reach an altitude of 10 feet. After all, if Pippi Longstocking can do it with a plane chopper hybrid. But for more than three decades, no one's been able to win the Sikorsky Prize offered by the American Helicopter Society. In 1989, California Polytechnic students were airborne for seven seconds. Down, okay, down, down. The Japanese made it to 19 seconds, and now the University of Maryland team got within 10 seconds of the goal with Kyle Glusenkamp in the cockpit. Yeah, at the end of the 50-second flight, I was definitely burnt out. Pilots have to be light yet powerful. They use their arms and their legs. Kyle answered an ad he saw posted. Are you strong but lightweight, and do you want to break a world record? Now he's done that, but the 50-second flight only made it a foot and a half or so in altitude. Still, Kyle says... It feels like floating on air. Maybe it's not as dramatic as the flight of Birdman a few months ago. He was an internet sensation. Until the Dutch filmmaker admitted flying by flapping his arms was all a hoax. The University of Maryland team calls its craft Gamera 2 after the Japanese movie monster, a giant flying turtle. At least no one's had to duck from this Gamera. So far, no one's been hurt by it. So far. What do you guys want to be when you grow up? World record holder. Yeah, baby! Jinimo, CNN. And here I thought college students just woke up at noontime, did nothing that, that, that was uh, meaningful all day long. But, I mean, after seeing that report from Jeannie, it turns out that they're, they're building meaningless things that don't really get very far off the ground. Well, I can tell you, Jeff, if I was piloting one of those helicopters, there is absolutely no way I would get off the ground. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Love that. The WVTT Severe Weather Action Team forecast. A low of 48 degrees tonight during the daytime on Wednesday. Partly sunny, breezy and nice with a high temperature of 71 degrees tomorrow. During the daytime on Thursday, sunny with a few patchy clouds around a high of 76 degrees. Then on Friday, sunny, a chance of an afternoon thunderstorm. Watch out for that, high of 83. And during the daytime on Saturday, sunny with a lot of humidity around and high temperature of 85 degrees.
That wraps things up for us. For the entire News Channel 25 WVTT team, I'm Jeff Andrelonis. And I'm Alexa Olson. Thanks for watching and have a great night.